the number one thing that I must say is switching to Mac or at least just the thought of switching to Mac was the most nerve wrecking experience that I've had in a very long time. I have never, never owned anything Apple Macintosh in my life. And the thought of switching to one of these devices was just, the thought of it was just driving me insane. I was worried about things like, this is it. If I do switch to an Apple product, I'm going to end up buying an Apple phone. I'm going to end up buying an Apple watch. I'll be stuck and dragged into this ecosystem. Otherwise I won't be able to function. To make matters worse, I look at videos like F-stoppers switching from Windows to Mac and it's driving him crazy. I looked at that video and I just canceled my order. I straight up canceled my order from my Mac. That's how terrified I was. So what is it about these new MacBooks that has me obsessing and willing to endure all of this stress and all of this anxiety? Well, it's a few key big features that called me anyway into this system. And the first big feature is the battery life. To be able to edit on DaVinci Resolve and Filmora X, which is the two main editing programs that I use, to export, to scrub, to apply noise reduction, and do a whole bunch of features while this thing is unplugged. And unplugged for hours? I was like, are you kidding me? That's not possible. I've been using Windows laptops for years now. And the minute you pull that plug, you lose substantial power. And when you do start to edit, it gets very hot, especially the ones that I have. I don't want a big, clunky, heavy laptop. I want something thin and light and sleek. And that's why I got this and these fans spool up. If the fans don't annoy you, well then the heat will because this thing gets fiery hot. And you pull the plug on this thing, not only will your battery life drop significantly on you, you're lucky if you get an hour and a half out of this, but all of your speed and power is gone. You're literally crawling. I've always stayed away from Max too because they pretty much had the same components that the Windows laptops have. They've always had either i9s or i7s or, or NVIDIA's and, uh, graphics cards. So it's like the same thing. You're just picking between operating system and I'm already used to Windows. So why even think about Mac? But this new M1 chip here just had me thinking how much simpler my work could get done. I don't need a new phone. I'm not giving up my watch. I like my watch. I'm not buying a new watch just to own a computer or a new phone just to own a computer so that I can work. So if these two can't function somehow or not interfere or block each other, that's good enough for me. And boy, oh boy, was I pleasantly surprised. The system was pretty simple to get up and started. It did take some time. I had nothing to restore from because I've never used Apple products before, so it was a fresh start. Everything was pretty simple. Now the trackpad was not what I was used to. When I went into the menu, I could get the trackpad to operate just like my Windows laptop. And on top of that, I actually opted not to go with the right click function that I use on the Windows because I felt like my finger always has to move from the top or the middle, come all the way down to the lower right, and always it's very clicky clicky on the Windows laptops. So when I found the double tap, or the tap with two fingers to right click, I just found that to be even more easier and intuitive. Just plugging a cable into the USB-C to USB-C prompted me. I clicked on the Android um, icon and there, boom, my files pulled right up. It was so simple and I could access my phone and dra drag and drop files back and forth easy. I love the fact that every time something gets plugged into a USB, it pops right up on your desktop and you can easily eject it from your desktop 
everything just seems so simplistic. I actually found myself liking this system even more. That's when I realized something huge. I downloaded Google Chrome and boy, oh boy, Chrome works here and it works here. And I thought, hey, this is an Apple product. They're gonna wanna push Safari, like Windows tries to push Microsoft Edge. They're not gonna allow it to integrate smoothly with their software. They're gonna want you to buy the Apple iPhones for everything to link up. No, that wasn't the case. I downloaded Google. It works seamlessly and beautifully. Every now and again when I'm working, I love to listen to Pandora. It's right here on my Google browser. If not, I can go and check my text messages. It's right here on my Google browser with notifications. <laughs> and then I can jump over to WhatsApp, talk to my family and friends and other clients. Of course, YouTube, this is my space right here, my email. And quite frankly, I found the email app under here to be quite um, easy to use as well. You just sign in and you read all your mail, whether it's the browser or from the app either which one worked beautifully. Basically everything that I needed done was 90% of it was in my browser. And then is when I realized, and you might realize too, or might not, depending on what your workflow is, I'm not really a Windows guy. I'm more of a Google guy. Most of my stuff is on Google. It's not even on Windows. I found the Google apps to work better on Windows than the Windows, than the Microsoft apps worked with Windows and I didn't even realize what was happening until I made this switch and then I realized I'm not even attached to Windows. I'm attached to Google. And pull up the file explorer which I found to be very simple and intuitive. I love this little bar at the bottom here. It's nice and I love the fact that you can adjust it, make it bigger, make it smaller, make the background transparent. Everything just seems so simple and I found myself saying why was I stressing myself out over this change? Why? It's so simple, right? And I have here all my Google Drive stuff. I can put it in my Google Drive here and it appears right here in seconds, just like AirDrop kind of a thing. And it's integrated on my computer. I can drag it from this file, put it on my desktop. It's right at my fingertips, seamless. So I'm like, wow, this is cool. I get to keep my phone. My phone works great. It actually integrates and works with the system. Beautiful. I just find like their options are really just based on simplicity and I'm not gonna lie, I'm really liking this operating system. DaVinci Resolve, it was a simple download and sign in. Uh, Filmora X, simple download and sign in and they work exactly the same. A few things that I had to do was set up new keyboard shortcuts. I should have exported them in my windows first and then try to bring them over. And then I don't even know if that would work because the keyboards are a little different, but hey, I had to do a little extra work, make back my keyboard shortcuts because I use special shortcuts for my, for my editing programs, but not a big deal. Something I was willing to live with. All the programs and the apps that I have for Windows are available on the Mac too. So that wasn't even an issue. And my external hard drive, which is basically USB-C to USB-C, works beautifully with all the Thunderbolts and everything. Not only that, this laptop has all the ports I need. Most important port that I actually need is my SD card. Yes, I know a lot of people think it's not necessary, but if you're a creator, um, you're gonna need an SD card. This is great, the ability to have HDMI and on all the USB-C and Thunderbolt ports are great, but I really need that SD card slot. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this thing. I'm surprised it was, it was simple and easy to use. The speakers are great, they sound nice, they sound loud. The keyboard works just fine, just like any other keyboard. I don't see any problem there. I know Mac users would complain about stuff like that in the past, but hey, I haven't had any problems with this one. And the trackpad is just beautiful. Everything just works. Not to mention the screen gets really bright. I've yet to test it outdoors to see how well it handles the sunlight, but indoors it's really bright and can get extremely bright. It's very rich, it's very detailed. I would say it's pretty much a 4K monitor. For me, the whole idea of having a laptop means that you should be able to do your work anywhere that you go. 
plugged in or plugged out. It's supposed to have that ability. And that's what Apple is bringing to the table right here. And that's what brought me to own my first Apple product. So I can be up moving around in the bedroom. Sometimes I'm in the kitchen. Sometimes I'm at my desk. Sometimes I'm at the sofa. I'm all over the place. I don't want to be tethered to a cord all the time. And I want to be able to scrub and export and do all of that just by walking around with this. That's what having a laptop is all about. Not being plugged into power all the time. I might as well just sit at my desk and go on my desktop. I didn't opt for the for the fully specced out 14 inch version. And the reason I didn't is because it doesn't matter how specced up you get, once you start throwing loads on any computer, there's only so much it can process in real time. When you start throwing noise reduction, when you start stacking 4K clips, H.264, H.265, all different types of variations on that timeline, every computer will bog down. I'm hitting play and it, it won't even play. It's very hard for it to play. So, so I got the M1 Pro with the 10 core uh, processor and 14 core GPU, uh, 16 gigabytes of ROM because I figure it's unified and I didn't go with 32 because I don't know how many years these batteries are going to hold up and I've heard horror stories with Apple and batteries so I figured after two years I'll just dump this and upgrade my laptop like I do so I didn't need the 32 um, gigabytes for future proofing and because it's unified memory everyone was saying 16 gigs is good enough I got one terabyte so that I can take my files off of this big SSD drop it into the one terabyte edit the video and export it out and get rid of those files and keep the majority of my files on here it was $23.99 for this whole package and that's what brings me to my next point what really drove me to apple products as well is and i hate to say it but their products have gotten really really cheap 2400 bucks for this type of power for this type of efficiency for this type of benefits for this type of brightness for this type of portability for this type of heat management and reliability you can't find this nowhere else i'm telling you find me a windows laptop that will give me this type of battery life and consistent power whether plugged in or plugged out thousand nit screen i don't i know this peaks out at 1600 but just give me a windows laptop with a thousand nits just put give me something i can put on my lap the fans are not going to start kicking in and heat and throttling and all that stuff that comes with the um, NVIDIA cards and the Intel cards, it's just not happening. And for Apple to do this and do it so cheap and pop all the ports in and give you everything you need, this is a creator's dream. I do have a couple of wishes. Like, yeah, the not notch doesn't really bother me, but hey, it's better off without it, right? So that's one thing. Every time I shut this laptop down, and I turn it back on, I have to log in with my password. Why don't you just let me use the fingerprint to log in every time I start it back up? Like, why do I have to put in my code? I get it's probably extra security, but that is a little annoying. If you're doing like graphic designing or any kind of other productivity work with this laptop, I cannot vouch for that. I just do primarily video editing and some light photo editing on this machine. So that's all I can speak from a perspective from. Um, I think this is way overkill. If you're just looking for a laptop for office work, you don't need this type of CPU and GPU power. Just get the base model, I would think and get whatever storage sufficed you. And I think a lot of Windows laptops as well will suffice for people who just do office work and don't really need any high performance or power. Either which way you go, you'll be fine. So I would say by whichever uh, operating system you're most familiar with, as long as you don't need heavy CPU and heavy GPU intensive workflows. This thing is pretty slim. It is pretty thin. It folds up very small. It's very light and easy to carry with. It is solid, right? It's a little thick, but nothing deal breaking. This is a no brainer for any creator. 
Apple has truly made a product here that can serve your work. Now, does that mean I'm switching over to Apple for everything? No, I actually do not need Apple for everything. I don't need Apple for my phone. It works beautifully. I don't need Apple for my desktop. My desktop runs Windows fine, and I'm comfortable with that too. For right now, Apple's hit the nail on the head when it comes to a laptop and what a laptop should be and how a laptop should perform for creators. This is the way to go, man. With that being said, make sure you do all the YouTube stuff. Make sure you give me a huge thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell to get notified when I release new laptop videos, I guess. <laughs> I just wanted to share my experience with you guys and I will catch you in the next one. Make sure you become a Patreon, guys. Big benefits to Patreon. Get direct access to me. Any questions, I'm right here on Patreon. Support this channel and there's benefits. Last mini two went all the way to the UK. Mm -hmm.